introduction. And also, I want to start my talk by uh, thanking uh, Wilson and Mauro for this invitation. <coughs> okay, today I want to <coughs> revisit, uh, uh, well, columnar defects uh, system. This is bo vortex physics in a very new uh, iron-based superconductors. <coughs> okay. You have seen this uh, kind of uh, uh, material list of uh, iron-based superconductors already many times. Uh, th this morning, uh, Professor Marr explained this to you. So, uh, uh, where is the one pointer? Okay, uh, then, uh, well, we are now mainly working on uh, uh, 122 and 11 system because these, uh, th these two systems are, are uh, by far the uh, uh, good system where we can get uh, obtain the uh, high quality single crystals. Now, uh, this uh, graph also introduced by Professor Marr uh, shows the characteristics of the iron based superconductors, uh, which is here and there. This is a, a valium potassium 122 or 11 system. They both have a high TC, a moderate high TC, uh, 36 or uh, 15 Kelvin, and uh, large HC2 up to 50 uh, Tesla. And uh, what's very interesting on and important here is the, uh, they, they also have a very small anisotropy, which makes uh, the irreversibility line very close to this uh, HC2 line. <coughs> and of course, uh, what we are interested in is this uh, uh, critical current density in these crystals. Now, uh, uh, well, Professor Ma uh, explained to you uh, in the case of uh, tapes, but in, in single crystals, we have already achieved uh, more than 10 to 6, 1 me me uh, mega amps per square centimeter uh, in the pristine state, and after irradiation, it can go up to more than uh, uh, 10 mega amps per square centimeter at 5 Kelvin. Now, <coughs> of course, we want to uh, enhance this JC even further if we can, and we know that the technique, which is the particle irradiation, which was also uh, uh, introduced uh, yesterday by Martin Kochkowski. And uh, we can use heavy ion to create this columnar defects, which matches very much well with the uh, 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 flux lines, and which can be a very good uh, uh, pinning centers. Or uh, we can use light particles like uh, protons or neutrons to indu introduce point defects like this. And the uh, ultimate goal to achieve is this depairing current, in this case, uh, uh, roughly 200 mega amps per uh, square centimeter in iron based superconductors. Of course, we can go up to this value, but we want to approach this value as much as possible. But one other thing we al always have to uh, care about is that uh, the, this kind of uh, scattering uh, centers can also suppress TC. For example, here, in, a, uh, in the same crystal, uh, when it is irradiated, the, the TC becomes lower. That's why this superconductivity here is, is now uh, destroyed. Okay, we were the first to introduce columnar defects in uh, iron-based superconductors, this uh, iron, iron cobalt uh, uh, 122 system. <coughs> and these small, tiny objects are columnar defects uh, from the top or cross-section. You see uh, some, some linear objects like this. And uh, the diameter here is roughly 2 to 5 nanometer, which is uh, much, much smaller uh, than the columnar defects in uh, cuprate high-temperature uh, high superconductors. In that case, roughly 10 nanometer uh, diameters. And uh, these are rather uh, uh, discontinuous uh, structures, which makes a very uh, good contrast with a more, much more continuous uh, columnar defects in, in uh, cuprate superconductors. And by introducing uh, columnar defects, in this case, uh, low energy gold uh, with matching field to Tesla, <coughs> we can enhance uh, the in the pristine state uh, one mega amps to the after the irradi irradiation, roughly up to five mega amps at, uh, at the lowest temperature uh, in, uh, in the self field conditions. Right. <coughs> And as I said, you know, uh, there are several systems we can work on, but I, today I will exclusively show data on this uh, uh, best crystal, one to two crystals, uh, which is uh, potassium uh, optimized, sorry, this is uh, valium 0.6, potassium 0.4 uh, uh, crystal with TC uh, uh, higher than 38 Kelvin. And uh, even in the pristine state, uh, JC is uh, roughly three mega amps uh, per square centimeter. Now, 
the one thing we need, should know is that all these uh, iron-based super, iron superconductors do not have any correlated defects because uh, in the case of, say, uh, YBCO, we have twin boundaries, which can mimic the effect of coramular defects. But in our system, we, uh, uh, if there are uh, correlated effects, that is solely from coramular defects. Okay. <coughs> so this is uh, 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 one uh, summary uh, between uh, uh, comparison, uh, comparing uh, uh, valium uh, uh, iron cobalt system, one, two, two, or uh, valium potassium system. So this one has uh, relatively lower JC uh, after, uh, uh, even after the irradiation. And the valium potassium case, uh, uh, in the pristine state, as I said, it's roughly three mega amps. But after uh, irradiating various kinds of uh, uh, ions, and we can go up to uh, 15 mega amps per square centimeter. Right. <coughs> OK. Now, so this is uh, another summary of, of uh, uh, Compa comparison be between columnar defects and uh, po point defects in, in th the same material. So here, as I said, it, when we only introduce columnar defects, we can achieve uh, 50 mega amps per square centimeter. When we use a proton to uh, introduce uh, uh, point defects, we can also go up to, say, 12 mega amps per square centimeter at lowest temperatures. If we combine these two, uh, at least in, in our uh, optimal condition, we can achieve this value uh, in this particular case, uh, uh, which is uh, this green one, proton irradiation, 1 times 10 to 16 ions per square centimeter, and uh, uh, this uh, 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 gold ion with uh, four tesla matching here. Now, this, this 19 mega uh, amps per square centimeter is one of the largest value ever achieved in one, in one to two system. OK. <coughs> now, we want to further somehow enhance JC. And uh, the, the technique is already established uh, uh, in the study of uh, high temperature superconductors, which is the spraying uh, the, the direction of coronal defects. Well, the, the physics is rather simple. When we just introduce uh, parallel coronal defects like this, uh, this half roof excitation, uh, these kinked parts can easily move this way or that way. In that way, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, bodices, bodex can hop from one columnar defect to the other easily. But when we have a well dispersion in the, the distance, it's not easy to move uh, towards, uh, the for example, in this case, uh, downwards. Uh, and that's uh, suppressing the uh, hopping probability. But uh, at the same time, by, by spraying like this, we uh, lose uh, magnetic stability. Because, uh, well, obviously, when we apply magnetic field uh, perpendicular to this uh, uh, plane, uh, well, tilting uh, flux lines is not energetically favorable. So there must be some optimal spray angle, you know, uh, to achieve the highest JC. And uh, this problem has been already attacked <coughs> by uh, IBM group, by, by Lear and Leonardo. And this is a very uh, beautiful uh, uh, work. And they uh, uh, introduced uh, this spray columnar defects with uh, many uh, 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 spray angles. And they uh, systematically uh, measured JC. So, so here's a summary. You know, as a function of a plus minus uh, spray angle, they got the uh, optimal or maximum uh, JC at around five degrees uh, spray angles. So this is uh, almost five, four, 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 four times enhancement compared with the pristine state. But uh, this has not been done in, in, uh, in our iron based superconductors. So we, we did this uh, in, in, in the present system. So here we use uh, mainly first, uh, we use uh, uranium. This is a rather heavy uh, atoms. Uh, and uh, the energy is also very high 2.6 GeV. And the TEM observation uh, clearly shows uh, a, creation, uh, a creation of uh, columnar defects like this. The diameter here is uh, well, roughly the same as in the case of uh, gold ions. It's roughly five nanometers. And we introduce uh, uh, several spray angles and also compare uh, in the tilt case. Maybe I only show a uh, spread case. And we tried many uh, doses, but I mainly show you eight tesla data. <coughs> OK, this is once again uh, the summary of the spray uh, experiment. Here, uh, this is a temperature dependence of JC for several spray angles. The blue one, uh, which is here, is just a parallel one. And obviously, the, the orange one, 
uh, plus minus five degree has the highest uh, uh, JC value o o at all temperature ranges. And this is uh, angular dependence uh, of, of JC. Once again, JC is highest uh, at five degrees. Okay, and uh, that the highest value here is uh, well close to the combination of point and uh, and uh, columnar defects 19, but it's slightly larger. In this case, 19.5 megaamps per square centimeter. Now, <coughs> okay, this is good. You know, we can achieve uh, well at least slight enhancement by spraying. You know, then we try to explore what we can do. You know, here we did uh, 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 the same measurement. <coughs> Uh, for for uh, for different uh, spray angle samples uh, in a very wide temperature range, I showed you uh, this data or that data, right? But as as we increase the spray angle, something funny, kind of a uh, broad structure appears like this or like that. So we didn't understand what it is, but we did know before this. Uh, when we introduce columnar defects uh, in uh, iron cobalt system using the same uh, uranium iron, we see this kind of dip or peak features. And we know what it is. Okay, this is uh, the self feed effect, you know. And uh, we have our, all our samples are thin plates. In the thin plate, in the critical state uh, uh, at zero field, the feed line is always curved like this, right? So when we introduce columnar defect parallel to the C-axis, this is not the uh, optimal condi condition. That's why uh, at zero field, JC is subclassed. But when we apply field uh, uh, comparable to the cell field, all the flux lines uh, become almost straight. That's why we have a, a better pinning by the columnar defect. That can well easily explain the cell field peak. But the peak I showed you is more more broader, could be different. And uh, we, we, we know uh, another uh, example of peak effect in other uh, columnar defect systems. This is a case of YBCO. Uh, you know, uh, in many cases, uh, we often observe this broad peak when we introduce columnar defects, right? And uh, this peak you typically is temperature independent, you know, here. Or in a broad temperature range. And it happens to be the peak occurs roughly some fraction of matching field, in this case, 30% uh, uh, or 40% of matching field. And uh, our uh, broad feature I, I, in, in uh, iron based superconductors is, has uh, almost temperature independent region here, but at higher temperature, it slightly uh, 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 shows uh, temperature independence. But it definitely much higher than the cell field. So we can eliminate the first possibility. So that maybe the second possibility, well, is applicable. But we have to th think about uh, one more thing. In our sprayed system, these are sprayed defects, uh, these, gre these green ones, there are two JC components, JC1 and JC2, right? And uh, JC1 and JC2 may have just self field effect, self field peak like this, but uh, what we measure is some average combination. So average may look like like this, broad, broader features. But we can, we can simply calculate uh, this so-called uh, anisotropic extended B model. And in this si situation, uh, with T and L as a dimension, and uh, two JC, JC1, JC2, we can uh, come up with this formula. Then uh, simple math can uh, prove that even if we have uh, two components, JC1 and JC2 have these th two peaks, that the average peak should always be just between uh, JC1 and JC2, never uh, beyond this, uh, in this case, JC2 value. So we can eliminate this anisotropic JC cannot explain uh, uh, the, our anomalous peak effect. Before uh, showing what we think is the origin, you know, I, I show you there is actually the, the uh, anisotropy in JC in this uh, spray system. So this, these angles are, are, are spray direction. We spray this this way or that way, depending on, on, on the angles. So, so here, plus minus five degrees, we spray per perpendicular. So, the, 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 so in that case, both motion across this spray plane is difficult. That's why JC is higher. Higher JC needs uh, smaller space. That's why this is narrower. And uh, we estimate this JC and isotopy roughly two. 
And as we increase the uh, spray angle, the uh, anisotropy of JC now uh, increases like that. <coughs> and uh, this kind of uh, well, uh, uh, anisotropy of JC or transport property has already been uh, uh, confirmed. For example, this is a, a tr transport measurement by Daniel Lopez uh, a long time ago. He see uh, uh, two uh, direction gives a different uh, uh, tr uh, uh, magnetic transition uh, transport uh, uh, properties, or there is one one uh, only one magneto optical work in the system where they introduce a, a sprayed columnar defects. In this case, as you see here, uh, this angle well it is 45 degrees. It's uh, isotropic in plane, but this is this angle is smaller uh, than 45 and uh, now, and in addition, the sh this shape and that shape is different. So this group uh, claims, depending on the field value, the anisotropy changes like this, like that. And actually, at the, at the low field limit, they, they claim that the anisotropy is opposite to what we observed uh, uh, in our iron-based superconductors. But I have some, some doubt about this uh, result because, as I said, in, in YBCO we have uh, work, uh, twin boundaries, so s twin boundary may distort uh, the, the flux uh, penetration profile, so we need to revisit this, uh, this problem once again. Now, okay, I do not tell you uh, what is a true origin, but I can give you a very good hint, uh, you know, this is the very first data by Leonardo Civale, uh, 91, very famous data. And even in this data, there's a peak here. The peak occurs, in this case, he introduced columnar defects 30 degrees from the C-axis, and only when he applied uh, uh, a magnetic field along that direction, he see this peak. And uh, this peak occurs at roughly at one tesla, you know, which is 30% of this matching field. Very similar to our observation, but the difference is that in our case, this is this peak only occurs when we spray, intentionally spray the columnar defects direction. In his case, he didn't intentionally spray, but there's another uh, picture in his paper. The, these are, uh, well, T T TM image. When I just follow, uh, you know, th these uh, columnar defects, it's not straight at all. You know, this is a, a red one line is a uh, 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 incident beam direction. So it has a natural spray already. So in that sense, our, well, intentionally spread system and his system is almost identical. So we can say that, you know, in a spray columnar defect system, that this broad peak feature appears at roughly one third of matching field whenever we apply the magnetic field along the average direction. The all the fields I is uh, applied along the average direction, in our case, along the C-axis of, uh, of the crystal. And uh, the, the same feature, you know, this is, a, uh, this is a broad peak, as I just mentioned. And, and in the same uh, uh, field range, we measured uh, magnetic relaxation rate, which is uh, this uh, orange curve here. The, uh, is the unit is here. So we see a, a suppression of relaxation rate. That suggests that this peak is produced by the slower relaxation of vortices and this Th this uh, uh, indirectly tells us that the peak is produced by the dynamical effect, not a static effect. Okay, this is okay, fine. But then I we need to want wanted to confirm what happens if we change the ion species. I showed you the case of uranium, 2.6 GeV 